All right, everyone. My name is uh, Wayne William Snowgrove. So the Tribe Fishing Lake First Nation, Saskatchewan, Canada. My spirit name is uh, Kanipa with Magua Standing Bear. And I also go by the name of Morning Eagle, given to me directly by my uh, elder Tony Stonehawk. I've been with him for 30 years. And so uh, this is kind of part of his medicine bundle here. Um, you know, when he gave me, um, yeah, we've sitting with it for, for 30 years. And so, uh, you know, I, at the beginning of that, I, uh, I didn't understand what kind of a journey that I was really on. I, I really just kind of went there to, to, to really 30 years ago, I stopped drinking. And so, uh, so I was just kind of sitting here you know, willing to do anything at that point. Well, almost anything. So, um, and so I, I started sitting with him and, um, uh, I started doing, um, I don't know. I, he, he, he kind of let me sit for about five years just in ceremony and then, one day just kind of taught me, uh, said, look, man, but let's, uh, want you to do some, some things with the, the fire for the sweat lodge thing. And so I was real honored to do that. And then he made me do uh, the placing and the, in the, uh, the sweat lodge ceremony. And then, uh, I don't know, about 10 years ago, uh, yeah. So I, I did fire for him. Let me back up a little bit. So I did fire for him for, uh, his, his main fire keeper for, for 12 years. And so, <clears throat> so very honored to, to be able to sit with him for, for as long, for as long as I have. And, uh, you know, one of those things that, that, that grandfather Tony, the medicine bundle that, you know, he carries is, um, his tribe is the, um, uh, uh, the Eastern Gate storyteller, the keeper, the keeper of the stories. Uh, uh, for, for, for the Eastern Gate. And so, you know, some tribes, you know, they kind of have their own medicine. And, you know, some people, some tribes dance and some tribes, or, you know, they kind of kind of have their, their specialty. So Grandfather Tony, his medicine is uh, storytelling. So I wanted to kind of kind of fill you in on, on, on that. And so when he passed down his medicine bundle to me to uh, give me some rights to, to carry the pipe and to... Uh, you pour, uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of medicine that came with it, and a lot of those, uh, and uh, that medicine is uh, to be able to uh, tell his stories. And so, uh, so. Uh, let's begin in the usual way. Let's, uh, let's, uh, actually, you know what, we're going to Again, again, if you have any smudge out there, let's go ahead and head and smudge and uh, yeah, go ahead and smudge. So, so, <clears throat> so um, yeah, let's uh, let's we're, we're just kind of setting the space here. Uh, we're really traditional. We really set that good, you know, that good intention when we set the uh, that sacred space. That's what we're really doing. We're really holding down. And making clear our uh, intentions, and, and so today, um, you know, let's talk about this a little bit. Is uh, tobacco, and so part of this this tobacco, especially now, especially here, you know, when I'm talking about direct medicine from uh, from grandfather Tony Stonehawk, is it, 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 that part of part of this prayer will be I ask permission to tell the stories from the ancestors. This is, these aren't my stories. I ask permission to tell their stories. So. Mm. Creator, great spirit, Kitchy Manitou. Megwitz, thank you. So it was on me. I love you. We love you. Thank you for the circle. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this teaching. Thank you to Grandfather Tony Stonehawk. Thank you for allowing me to to speak 
for the ancestors today and to tell their stories and their stories that have been passed down from generation to generation. We come here in a good way. We come to learn about the ancient sacred agreements of harmony and balance. We come here today, we mean no harm in what we do. We come here today to, to, to listen to their stories as a way of celebrating life and celebrating connection and understanding that rhythm and that flow that is in life. These stories, thank you. Through these stories, we, we will learn. We will learn to sit in a good way. So, so again, thank you. Thank you very much, spirits. Thank you for this circle. Thank you for everyone who is here and, 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 and who will listen to, to these very, very sacred teachings. Again, thank you, Grandfather Tony Oh, thank you. Good one. So, uh, so again, my name's uh, Kanipa Witt Makwa, and uh, today we're, we're talking about storytelling. And, uh, you know, what is storytelling? You know, it's kind of like the colonial word, and you know, there's a couple questions that really come up. It's like, you know, storytelling is, is kind of like, uh, well, I'm waiting for you to entertain me type thing. And, you know, that, that's really good. But I, I got a couple questions about that. That was a while ago. And uh, they said, well, you know, that's good. But, you know, like we want to know more about traditional teachings and stuff, you know. And uh, every story is traditional teachings. Every story is, uh, as in the colonial world, you're in school type thing. You know, you're in school, you know. You know, uh, you know, storytelling isn't it like isn't about going to like the theater and being entertained and eating popcorn and, and stuff like that. And, you know, no, you know, this is very, very, very traditional. You, you know, yeah, it's uh, traditionally at night every every tribe would get together, and and, and the old ones would would sit the new ones down. The little ones down, and uh, they would tell these stories. And so, why do we tell these stories? Why? Why do we tell these stories? Well, you know, we, we, you know, we just said this. We said about growing and living and understanding and connecting to the ancient sacred agreements, and that begin with harmony and balance. And so, every story. It is an education on how to uh, to do that, uh, to get a better perspective, to learn what those spirits in, in the stories really are about. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, let's say, you know, and, you know, the, 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 there's so much to storytelling. Let's, you know, Indigenous tribes, we, we spoke on traditional indigenous tribes. We really spoke about, we, we taught the young ones how to listen. You know, I don't think, uh, it's been a long time since I've been in like the first grade, but it's kind of like, they didn't teach me anything about listening. They told me to sit still a lot, you know, <laughs> a lot, be quiet, clean, <laughs> be quiet. But, uh, you know, like they didn't tell me why, you know, here, uh, it's very traditional. It, it's listening is the first form of communication. That's it. That's the deal. That's why we do what we do. Listening. Some people hear, but they don't listen. Type thing. You know, that's the difference. You know, we 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 hear, we listen, and and then we we respond. Whereas really, you know, I can remember sitting. You know, I I, I just. I just got reunited with, with my tribe back in 03, and I remember going up there, you know, you know, going up there and, uh, um, and, you know, sitting with the old ones, you know, sitting with the elders, you know, and I can remember, you know, they said I talked very quick, you know, kind of like an Eastern, yeah, 
Eastern Seaboard type talk. I think they talk very quick and you know, respond quick and talk back quick. And, but there, it was really slow. And at first, I didn't understand what they were doing. It was just like, like someone would talk and then a the person that was sitting there. And then they would respond, but they would wait like 30 seconds. We don't have 30 seconds to wait here, but it's like 30 seconds, you know, and then they would send something in the room. So, you know, I'm sitting there looking back. Why is no one talking, I think. But, you know, what they were doing is they were communicating in a very, very traditional, traditional way. You know, and, uh, you know, once we, you know, and, you know, there's so many things, too, that, like, you know, once the, the, the little ones were taught uh, Wankabit how to sit in a sacred way, you know, not only listening, but sitting in a good way, you know, like not fidgeting, you know, today, it's like, you know, got all that stuff out there, you know, children, you know, even grown children, you know, have a hard time sitting, sitting alone, and just, just sitting and, you know, listening, so, well, <clears throat> so those are some of the things. And so I got a really good story to tell today. It's one of the Jumping Mouse series of uh, stories. And I'm not sure if I told this. You know, I'm not sure if I told this story yet. Uh, jumping Mouse, there's a whole series. It's probably like 30 or 40 stories of just Jumping Mouse stories. I know. So, uh, so anyway, let's... Uh, Jump right in. Right, let, me, uh, let me light a little sage again. Let this thing go in here. So, uh, the smoke really helps me connect. You know, that's why, you know, that's a better connection. And don't be surprised. I, I really talk with my eyes closed, so don't, don't be. Was a, there was a mouse community in the forest. And every day they would wake up and they would do their, their mouse things. They would scurry here and they would scurry there. They would watch for spots in the sky. Those are hawks, hawks and other birds of prey. So they want to, they would watch for hawks in the sky and they would, again, they would be busy, busy, busy doing mouse things. But there was this one mouse in particular who was a little distracted. He was a little distracted and they said, young one, why don't you, why don't you get busy, busy, busy? We have mouse, mouse, mouse things to do. So the mouse looked over and he, he looked at him and he said, yeah, I'm just a little tired of doing these mouse things. Scurrying here and scurrying there. Watching for spots in the sky. So one day the, he woke up and he heard this noise before, but he really focused in on, on this noise. And he didn't know what it was, and so he went up to one of his mouse elders. And he said, Mouse elder, Mouse grandfather, what is that noise I hear in the distance? And the mouse elder looks over and says, Oh, don't mind that noise. We have mouse, mouse, mouse things to do. We have to get busy, busy, busy because we have all these mouse things to do. Now get busy, get busy. So the little mouse was just, just sitting there and just like, ah, he could, was really, he was really <laughs> focused and intent on, on knowing what this, this, this sound was. The sound was, and, and he, remember he, he went on a, 
one of a tree that that fell over and he was right here and he would he would jump up. He would jump up and he would look at the he would look at see what's what's over there but he couldn't see. And all the other mice they would look at him and say, Get busy, get busy, get busy, we have mouse things to do. And so we looked over and said, You know what? I'm gonna go over towards that direction and I am going to to find out what that, that strange noise is. I have no idea what that, that, that noise is. And so the little mouse went, little mouse, and as he got, got closer, the, the, the noise got louder and louder and it was, it was a, it wasn't a rumble, but it was getting louder. And so he would jump, jump, and jump, and he'd just look around. He wouldn't see anything. And so finally, he, he, he finally, he, he got there, and he looked over, and, 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 and it was a, it was a stream, but it was a large stream. A large, it wasn't a river, but it was a large, large stream, and he, he could, could hear the trickle and, 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 and the flow, and that was it, what that big, big sound it was and he was looking he was looking over and said he saw something off in the distance too and he wondered what that was he saw something way off in the distance and it looked like that and he says ah, i've never seen anything like that what is that so he kind of jumped and jumped and jumped and then he then he heard out and he looked down and and there was mr frog and mr frog and Mr. Frog said, what are you doing here? You're a mouse. You're not supposed to be by the stream. Don't you have mouse things to do? And, and so, so, uh, so and the mouse said, I was kind of jumping to, to look at what was going on over there. And Mr. Frog says, well, you're a jumping mouse then. Well, jumping mouse, there is the, the magic mountain over there. That is the magic mountain. Jumping Mouse and uh, I like the name Jumping Mouse, but how do I get there? Well, the, the frog said you have to cross the stream, then you have to go through the woods, and then you have to cross a field, and then right there, across the field, is right there, the big, the magic mountain is right there. And Jumping Mouse goes, wow, what happens at the magic mountain? And the frog looks over and says, magical things happen at the magical mountain. And Mr. Mouse goes, oh, okay, well, how do I get there? You know, and so, uh, well, the frog says, I'm an old frog. I'm Grandpa Frog. And I don't know how, and I've lost both my eyes. And I can't see, I can't see my way across the stream anymore. And I'm sad because my family is over there and I can't see them anymore because I cannot get there. And so Dumpy Mouse looked at him and said, well, what if you could see over there? What if I could help you get over there? And the old man frog he said, yes, you help me get over there and I will help you. I will help you. And Dumpy Mouse says, I will help you too. I will help you too. And so I will hop on your back and then you will swim me over and I will help you after. And I said, okay. And so the jumping mouse, he hopped on the frog's back and, and, and they swam over, they swam over to, to the other side. It took them a little while, but they, but they made it. Jumping mouse got a little wet and so he just, just got over there. And so, 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 the jumping, so, uh, Grandfather Frog says, okay, well, well, thank you for, for getting me over here. But now I can't see my family because I'm still blind. 
You know, tell me now, said, I can help you. I can help you. I will give you. I will give you sight. I'm going to pray real hard, and I'm going to give you some sight. <laughs> so, tell me now, she prayed really hard. Prayed really, really hard. And all of a sudden, boop, one of his eyes popped out and went right to the eye of the frog. And so now the frog was able to see and said, oh, I can see all my babies again. I can see my family again. And Jumping Mouse said, that's good. That's good. Now, which way do I go to the Magic Mountain? They said. And so he said, okay, we're going to just cut through the woods right there. And then there's a big field. Now, be careful of the field because there's spots in the sky right over the field. <coughs> I'll point you the way to where the magic mountain is right over there. So Jumpy Mouse went on his way. He, he, he was able to see and the sun was out. He was walking through the woods and spots in the sky. He was having a good time. Having a good time. And then after a little while, he came to the field. He came to the field. And he saw it just like the forest has ended and just beyond the field was was there. And then he was looking right up at the sky. He said, oh, no, I don't see any spots in the sky. And he didn't know what to do because it was too dangerous. It was too dangerous because his whole mouse family told him, watch out for spots in the sky. They come down and they take you and you disappear. So... We didn't know what to do. And so he, he kind of leaned up against a tree and said, I don't know what to do. And he looked over and he saw two big caves right there, just kind of sitting there. Kind of like a little, like a little, little big mountain kind of thing. A little big mountain. He saw two big caves there. And he said, well, might as well go take a nap in the cave and figure it out figure things out. So we crawled in the cave. So so we crawled in the cave and he was laying down and he was sleeping and then and then he noticed there was a big rush. No. There was a whoo like that. And he flew. He flew out of the cave. And he looked up and all of a sudden he he saw the he saw it wasn't a cave at all, but it was a buffalo standing there, and he crawled into the nose of the buffalo. And and and, and, and as he as he looked at the buffalo, Mr. Buffalo took down and said, "What were you doing in my nose?" And Dumpy Mouse said, "I was there to take a nap. I'm lost. I'm trying to go to the the Magic Mountain." And Buffalo goes, "Why would you go to the Magic Mountain?" Because I want to go and, and do do magic, do magical things at the Magic Mountain. I want to learn what magic is. I want to learn how to see. I want to learn how to get perspective. And as a little mouse, I don't know how to do that. And I don't know how to get there because there's spots in the sky. Mr. Buffalo, I don't know what to do. Mr. Buffalo said, I'm an old buffalo. I've lost both my eyes and I can't see. I, I've lost my herd and I've lost my tribe and I can't see anymore. And I'm just waiting here to die. And, and Jumpy Mouse was really, really, really sad. And he said, well, hmm. I will give you one of my eyes if you take me to the Magic Mountain. I can crawl, I can walk right underneath you so the spots in the sky won't see me. And then you can take me right over to the, the Magic Mountain. And then Old Man Buffalo said, okay, okay. And just like that, poof! Jumpy Mouse's other eyes went through it right into the eyes of the buffalo. And the buffalo 
Mr. Buffalo was so happy because he could reunite with his tribe, his people, his four-legged. He missed his friends. He missed his friends. He missed his family. He missed his loved ones. He said, I will happily take you, Dumping Mouse, to the Magic Mountain so you can see with greater perspective and you can learn about all things. <laughs> that is what they, they see over at the Magic Mountain. And so off they went. So off they went. And, and, and so the buffalo was walking and, 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 and Dumpy Mouse was walking underneath them and they were just kind of walking like that. You know, they were just running along and they were talking and they were chatting away and they were, Dumpy Mouse was so excited to learn about these, able to to get and see new things and feel new things and, and, and to learn about these magical things. And, and, and so it took them a little while, but there were no spots in the sky, so there was nothing to worry about. And so finally they got into to the other end of, of, of that big open field. It took them most of the afternoon. And so what, what they found out was, Mr. Buffalo found out that at the end of that field was a foot of the magic mountain. And so, okay. And so, and so they said, you were here. And now that I must go, I must go. But the, the magic mountain was steep. It was steep. And Jumping Mouse said, thank you, let me so he cried, crawl up, and he slid all the way back. And he cried all, and he crawled up, and then went all the way back. And so Mr. Buffalo, he knew of some things of the Magic Mountain. He knew some, some magical things were there. And so he said, Jumping Mouse, Why don't you, I want you to, to run underneath me, but I want you to, I want you to flap your, your front paws. And the faster you go, the faster I will run. And the faster you, you run, the faster I will run, but, but I want you to flap your, flap your hands and, 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 and your arms. And, and, and so now the, so Dumpy Mouse said, okay, okay, I can do that. And, 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 and that way you can get momentum to go up to the mountain and get your new perspective of things. And so that's what they did. They set off and Jumpy Mouse was running. And the buffalo was doing the buffalo, he was running. And then he was flapping his wings, he was flapping his his arms, he was flapping his arms, and flapping his arms, flapping his arms, and then he, he could feel something. And then he could feel his, his feet jumping off the ground, jumping off the ground and jump on, and then he felt the, the wind underneath his, his arms. And then the buffalo said, you're flying, you're flying. And Jumping Mouse, and the buffalo said, open up your eyes. And Jumping Mouse opened up his eyes and he looked over and became a bird. He became an eagle. He became an eagle. And so he was flying and flying, and he flew so high, the buffalo looked like an ant. He flew so high right over the, the magic mountain. And he flew back down to, to the buffalo, he kind of landed there and he said, this magic mountain is beautiful. Thank you for bringing me to the Magic Mountain. 
a whole Pataki on. So, so, there's a lot to that story. There's a lot to that story. So, I want you to kind of write in the feed what you got from, from that story. What you got. What you got. You know, I, 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 you know, heard that story. I've probably seen it. I heard it like, seen it. I heard it like, uh, probably like uh, 50 or 60 times over 30 years, you know. And I can remember the first time I, I, I heard it, I was like, ah, I don't know, Pops. I don't know. About, oh, I don't know, you know. I don't know, but put your, you know, put your comments in the feed there. Just put your comments in the feed. And so, you know, uh, took me a while to really understand, you know, what they were talking about in, 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 in that story. They were talking about, uh, you know, first thing, uh, first thing is vision. You know, they're talking about vision. You know, it's physical vision type of thing, you know, physical, you know, and, and it's good to have physical vision, like I'm seeing you, I'm seeing, I'm seeing Jeffrey, I'm seeing Helene, I'm seeing, uh, uh, I'm seeing, seeing all these, uh, Krista, I'm seeing Rosa, and I'm seeing all these things, you know, I'm seeing my red shirt on the screen, and I'm seeing, you know, and, and, you know, that's good, you know, but what was happening was, it's really a story about spiritual vision. Yeah. Jumping Mouse gave up his his physical vision, but he got something so much more out of it. He got so much more beauty out of it. You know, the old ones say, you know, pray hard and, you know, pray until, you know, Pray until you can see more with your eyes closed than your eyes open. And this is what that story teaches. This story teaches. This story teaches about, you know, you know, when he, you know, you know, stories, there's so much, you know, so many overlapping and intertwined teachings here. You know, he offered something. He offered something. He offered his physical vision so that others may have that have lost their vision so it's really offering so it's really an offering story too so he, he, you know when when jumping mouse gave his vision to the frog so he could cross the stream you know i mean i could talk another hour just about that really just kind of you know so you know, kind of moving waters fluid waters you know seeing and unseen powers there you know, to kind of be able to, to navigate and, you know, negotiate that to get to the other side. And, and really, um, once, both times, that jumping mouse gave his vision it, it, it so that they could reconnect to, to their tribe, to the frog tribe and, 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 and to the buffalo tribe. So that, that's, you know, so, you know, a kind of a question would be, I would pose to you, would be what are off, what are you offering for your tribe? What are you willing to give to help your tribe get better connected? How about that? Better connected, bringing them back into, again, let's bring in the ancient sacred agreements again of harmony and balance, you know? Harmony and balance, you know? What are you willing to give your tribe to, to offer, to give back to your tribe with harmony and balance? What are you willing to do that? You know? And, you know, let's get out of the realms of, of you know, um, just our immediate family here, but we're really talking a much larger tribe. You know? We can even bring in all, all other tribes. You know, Mother Earth is really one big tribe type thing. So what? So what are you doing to bring to the, to, to bring to the table, so so that others others can get connected, others can live. What what are you willing to 
to do? What are you willing to do? You know, jumping mouse without even knowing it really did just kind of intuitive and knew that once he gave that first sign, that he still had another. So we gave half of, of, of his sight so that others may be connected, reconnected. And then let's just talk about blind faith. He knew he was going to be blind when he gave his other eye to the buffalo. He knew he was going to be blind. You know? But he also knew that the magic mountain was magic. So, so there was a belief there. He believed that he, and, and his intent was very, very clear about that too. He wanted a new perspective. He wanted a new perspective. He was tired of being a little, little jumping mouse. He knew there was more out there. He wanted to learn, but he didn't know how to get to the magic mountain. So again, you know, like again, he, he, he used he used other nations to help him get there. How about that one? He helped other nations to help him get there. He helped those nations connect. You know, again, what are we we now? What it was? What are we doing? What are you doing today to help other nations connect? How about that? You know. And you know, getting back to the whole thing of, of, of losing both both his eyesight, both both his eyes. You know, you know, there's got to be some level. I, I'm not sure if I could do that. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. You know, yeah, you know. So th th there was some level, some beautiful, powerful level of faith there that he knew he believed in his prayer. He believed in his prayer and, and when he was making that offering, making those offerings, he was making those offerings, those offerings in the spirit of, of, of faith. He was willing to, to give something first to have something later offering first and getting that gift later. So it's really, it's a beautiful teaching about coming full circle. It's really a teaching because here in like the colonial world, we have like a, a you know, kind of like a cosmic Santa Claus where if we need something, we, you know, we're not gonna offer anything, you know? We're not gonna offer anything, you know? Uh, Hey God, I, I need you know more money. God, I need uh, you know a better car. God, I need a newer car. God, I need more money now to pay for that new car. God, I need more money to pay for the insurance of that car. God, I need this. God, I need that. And, you know, with all this, I need we forget to offer. You know, once you know in 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 in, 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 in the indigenous traditional indigenous world, nobody went without. You know. So again, he, he's teaching, he's teaching us in this story how not to go without. And teaching others, you know, if they really need them, like if you need something, and I have it, I, I will give it to you for the greater good of, of the tribe. How about that? How about that? Oh. And, you know, let's talk about the tail end of that story, too, you know. You know, <clears throat> you know there's something sneaky there with the buffalo. The buffalo knew something was there. I, you know, I thought for, for years about it. I prayed for that for years about that. Like, how did this buffalo know to tell this little mouse to, let, like, flap his arms? Like, how did this little buffalo know, you know? And, uh... You know, I can remember talking to Grandfather Tony this, and, and he, that would be after lodge would be exhausted, but I'd be like, yeah, we sit up to two, three o'clock in the morning just talking about, like, you know, how this little mouse, like, go to, like, flap his little arms, and then, you know, 
kind of like that, you know. Grandfather Tony always has the same answer, you know, pray hard, pray hard. You know, he's, Grandfather Tony's beautiful about that because he, he lets me come to my own conclusions. Type thing. He, he, and, and that's one thing I haven't got quite, been doing this for about 30 years, probably heard that story for 30 years, you know. I'm still asking that question. And Grandfather Tony's still telling me, like, pray hard. But, you know, the rest of it, you know, like, like as, as I just explained, you know, it's really about offering, giving, faith, full circle. Everything that this really explains, you know, how we should really live. You know, how we should really live. Can you do that? Do we have that level of faith? We have that level of faith. Are you interested in having that level of, of, of faith? You know, you know. And you know, we haven't even got to the eagle part yet. You know, we're still kind of like he's flapping his, his, his arms right there. You know. So, so you know, let's talk about that for a minute. What is that? Jumping mouse flapped his arms and then became an eagle. So what are we talking about here? What are we talking about? You know, like, you know, if, if we just said, you know, perspective, I think we, we would fall really short, you know. We would fall really short. You know? We would fall really short. Because you got a whole lot more than perspective. You know, he got what most of us are looking for, is transformation and learning how to fly. Becoming something that he never believed that, that he could become. Because of what he did, because of his offerings, because of, because of his love for other communities, that he was able to do this, other sacred families and other communities, that he was able to do this in the first place. How about that? This gets really deep really quick, by the way. <laughs> so, you know, try to keep this to an hour, but it kind of hangs, you know. <clears throat> and, you know, and, you know, we still haven't touched about him soaring and looking down yet. We haven't touched that yet. We haven't touched that. Talk about new perspectives. How about that one? You know, how about that one? How about going back to the buffalo and thanking him for that? How about going back and thanking the old ones? The elders. When's the last time, you know, you know, you did that? When's this you know, when's the last time we thanked, you know, our grandmothers? The prayers of our grandmothers are, are, are the reason most of us are here today. You know. You know. When's the last time we thanked them? Whether they're still here or not, we can still thank them or not. You know, in sadness or in health, you know, we can still, we can still be grateful and still thank them. And how about their ancestors too? You know, you know at the end of the story is, is thank you. Is thank you. Yeah. I challenge you to do that. At the end, at the end of every day, say thank you. At the end of the day, when's the last time you just said thank you? Just thank you. Thank you for everything. Yeah. In the spirit of jumping mouse, you know? In the spirit of jumping mouse, you know? So, you know, let's kind of recap here. So, so, and then, uh, and then I would really love to, to hear from you. I'm not seeing too much in the feed, but, you know, something to think about, something to pray about. You know, as Grandfather Tony said, pray hard pray hard about this. You might have to listen to that story kind of over and over again, too. I'm definitely going to put this one in the uh, YouTube thing. channel. Thing. So, you, know, it's, you know, we need a little bit more safe here, you know, to really get us connected. So, was Jumping Mouse you know, left his family, left his tribe for something else or something bigger. A deeper, deeper understanding. Maybe his family said, look, man, just like, you know, 
Hey, we just got mouse things to do right here. Just, just stay in your cubicle, stay in your box, stay in your lane. Where have we heard that before? But the move with shakers and dreamers, you know, we do something else. We do something else. I have a hard time staying in my lane. Not a hard time doing that, you know. You know, growing up, you know. But now I'm doing it on, on, on a much more spiritual level, you know. You know, the same thing Jumping Master said, you know. His family said, we want you to conform to what we're doing. Because you have mouse things to do. Hurry, hurry, hurry. We have mouse things to do. It kind of sounds like the colonial world. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Make more money so you can pay those bills. That's kind of what that sounds like, you know. Pay those bills. Pay that this. Pay this. Pay this. Work, work, work so you can pay us. Work, work, work so you can pay us. Work, work, work so you can pay us. You know, I mean, this time. Like, yeah. And then Jumping Mouse said, no, I, I, I need something else. I got this prayer here. I'm, I'm walking with this prayer. Jumping Mouse walked with the prayer through the whole thing. How about that? How's, when's the last time you said a prayer and really walked with that prayer? How powerful and beautiful is that? How can you do that? How can you do that? You know, as traditional, traditional natives, we knew, we knew these things. We taught our little ones these. I wish I heard this in the first freaking grade. I, I might have passed first grade. <laughs> I might have passed first grade if they just started talking about this kind of stuff, you know? Tell me to go to the corner, you know? <laughs> Sit in a chair, you know? You know? No more fighting, Wayne, you know, kind of, you know. You know, so, so these, these are the stories of, you know, education here. These, these are much deeper than just some mouse right there. It's, it's a reflection of prayers that we have to walk. Places we have to go. Offerings we have to make. Stories about, about walking in faith, giving them something that you think you need. How about that? How about saying about what that one? Pretty intense, actually. Pretty intense, pretty beautiful. Pretty beautiful, you know, and, and I, I just love the way, you know, I can never say the grandfather does anyway, so, uh, so grandfather, I, I'm sorry if I fell short, you know, telling this story, but, you know, it's just, it's just one of those beautiful stories, you know, just one of those absolutely beautiful stories that, you know, says so much, so simply, so beautifully, you know, and, you know, the other thing is, too, that it really teaches that, 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 that other four legends and other creatures have, have thoughts and feelings too, you know, thoughts and feelings. You know, we think they're just like, you know, just dumb animals out there, you know. No feelings, no heart, they're just doing their doing, just some really, you know, whatever they do, you know, just raising their own thing. You know, it really teaches us that, that, that they're living sentinel beings too, the four legends, you know. You know, the creeper crawlers, you know, the, the things that swim, you know. It teaches us that. It teaches us how to, that they're there and, and, and that we should communicate with them, too. You know, communicate with them. It teaches us practicality, spots in the sky. Hey, look, hey, man, we got to be careful when we're walking with our prayers. You know, we got to be careful, man, you know. You know, this goes, this goes on and on and on. So, but we got to kind of keep it to, uh, to, to two pound an hour. You know, again, I would love to hear, I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings, uh, comments, questions, concerns, uh, you know, particularly about this, you know, particularly about this. And, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, we have some little ones, little ones at home, or you think the little ones uh, would benefit from this. this. Please, you know, please, again, you know, we are the medicine, all medicine is meant to be shared. So, uh, 
so please just uh, just have them watch this. You know, have them watch us. Have them watch watch grandfather's story being told over and over again. So anyway, we will we will close in the uh, the usual way. It's, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a beautiful. You know, you know it's funny. Like three days ago, I thought I had the story down. In fact, I in fact I wrote it. This story, this story, and then this morning. Another story popped in. I said, you know what? Okay, this story. And so I'm sitting here praying five minutes before, five minutes before the, uh, before we're, we're supposed to go live. And Spirit said, no. I said, no. Like, what do you mean, no? <laughs> Just running out of time here. here. Spirit, got any ideas? And, and so this one just said, you're going to tell this one. Said, okay. All right. So. It probably happened while I was playing flute in in in, in America. <laughs> Some of the behind the scenes things that you don't normally hear. But I'm just kind of okay, so let's just kind of sit with that story. Let's sit with you know, let that story marinate. You know, let that you know, and you know, again, feel free to replay this into the uh, the story part of the story. It can just kind of resonate, right? I mean, for me. You know what I'm going to sit with? And, and I've heard this story probably 50 times. So, uh, you know, what I'm going to sit with is, 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 am I walking in faith? Am I walking with my prayers? Am I willing to go through stuff as I'm walking through my prayers? Am I willing to do that? Or is it more convenient just to let them go? Forget that. Interesting question, right? So again, it's, uh, thank you very much. My name is Kenny Poet Mac Wash, Damien Barrett. This has been story time. It's been such an honor to be here and to 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 sit with you and, and, and to share uh, some medicine with you. Um, uh, once again, I want to thank uh, Grandfather Tony Stonehawk, uh, Nanticoke Tribe. Thank you again, uh, uh, Grandfather Tony, for, for you know, sharing your medicine. The medicine still carries on, so, so thank you, grandfather, for that. And uh, you know, again, let's let's you know let's take these lessons that we learned here today, and you know, let's walk with them. Let's walk with them in a good way for for the rest of the day. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, let's do what Jumping Mouse said, and just maybe just say thank you at the end of the day. So 
Thank you. And uh, let's, uh, let's have a great day. And uh, if no one said that, they love you today. Uh, I love you very much. Thank you.